Hello and welcome to another automation guide where today I'm hopefully going to be able to give you some uh, help with uh, the visual design of your cars. Uh, now I've given you some uh, tips and tricks hopefully uh, that have helped you. Uh, on the mechanical side uh, it's time to take a look at the visuals. Now um, I'm not going to pretend to be a uh, expert designer. Um, I like to think I can do some decent designs like this. Um, I do understand if you don't like my designs, but I do think they are at least detailed and uh, interesting, uh, which is sort of the main goal, really. I mean, everyone's got their own tastes, but I do think there's objectively sort of more detailed design cars, which is what I'm hoping to uh, help you guys do. So anyway, first of all, make sure that you finish the mechanical side before you begin designing. Uh, this is just so that you know what you're doing is going to work, um, you know, um, you can get any morphs out of the way, uh, having to morph after you've added fixtures on can really mess things up, so um, yeah, just having something ready um, to uh, put fixtures on, which um, you can also use to uh, decide what you uh, put on, for example, I have steel wheels on this, um, so I've gone with a bit of uh, basic steelies. Um, for that reason, um, which is for good reason, uh, which I'll explain later. Uh, anyway, first of all, um, yeah, get out of your head that minimalism works in this game. It doesn't. You can't just slap on some headlights and a grill and call it a day. You really need to add details, um, mainly because everyone has the same pool of bodies to work with. It's difficult to make your car look any different. Um, if you want to see what happens if that happens, if you do that, look at Volkswagen Audi Group, you know. All their cars are basically just one body with different sets of headlights. Uh, but at least those faces are well designed, um, for the most part. So, yeah, sort of, you know, you want to add detail to where you can, you want to do interesting things, because everyone's got the same fixtures, the same bodies to work with. Uh, you can't just slap them on and call it a day. So a good thing to do is to get to grips with the designer. Now, um, most of these buttons are pretty self-explanatory. You've got your layering here, so that you can decide uh, what layer um, components are on. Um, just need to mirror that. Um, yeah, anyway, um, you've, you can adjust the layering of uh, each component. Uh, do I have a good example? Um, to show you. So, I suppose bringing this down. Uh, so I bring that down, and then you can see the headlights overlap, and not really uh, much else I can do. But uh, again, if I get rid of that, then all of a sudden the headlights disappear uh, because it's on a layer below. Um, putting things on the same layer I mean they uh, overlap each other. So yeah, for example, I have both of these. Uh, otherwise, the one the higher layer just completely overwrites whatever's underneath it. Um, so you can do some interesting things like these uh, grills over the headlights um, that I've done here. Um, also good for making sort of more detailed grill designs like uh, these sort of overlapping grills I've got on the front and back here. Um, yeah, so learn to use those. Your other buttons here, uh, all the rotations and flips uh, should hopefully make sense. Mirroring, just copy it to the other side which is good. Then you have your line tool and cardinal lock. Now, these are quite important for uh, trying to uh, make designs work, especially with bumpers. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to show you, to be honest. Uh, if I do a line to, it follows the curves of the body. Um, so, for example, here, yeah, it comes straight out. Whereas if you cardinal lock, it faces straight or upwards or sideways. You know, uh, it's basically perpendicular to the centre of the curl, I guess is the easiest way to say it, even though it's not strictly true. And then aligned to the horizon, I'm not actually 100% sure what it does. Uh, from what I could tell, it basically does the same as cardinal lock. Um, so yeah, that's a thing there. Um, then delete, uh, undo change, redo change. And you have lock and unlock, which is useful for if you've got loads of overlapping fixtures and you just want to click and drag stuff. Uh, just locking some things at the back uh, so that you don't accidentally change them uh, can help a lot. Um, 
then just deselect does that. Then on the right, tool highlighting, which uh, yeah stops the green outline, which can be good if you're trying to line things up, and uh, having the outline removed can uh, really help you uh, zoom in and uh, examine. For example here, well, probably not the best since it's all really jagged. Um, but yeah, like if I clicked up here, you can see trying to um, sort of align things the green line can sometimes get in the way. Hopefully you at least understand. And then you have fixture uh, snapping. So that just basically means snapping to the center. So for example, if I do that, I have to move my mouse to here um, before it moves. Whereas otherwise, if I just turn that off, it just moves. I could just turn it back on and just snap it back to the center. Um, so learning your, uh, your tools can be really useful. Um, Remember that mirroring can also be deselected as well as put onto anything. So, uh, while well, I've got the bumper here, um, I have uh, mirrored the bumper there. Uh, I have also unmirrored the uh, wing mirror here uh, because I've only got a driver's one. Um, so yeah, just take into account these kind of things. Um, know that they're there and can be useful um, if you. Um, it, just learning what, what you can do, what the tools are, uh, can really help you do detailed designs. Next, when uh, coming up with your designs, uh, two important things. One, look at real life inspirations. Uh, use lots of uh, sources. Um, and um, also, get a sketchbook. Just have one next to you. Um, because obviously, if you're trying out designs in automation, you're sort of at least it seems like you're limited to the shapes uh, or the uh, types of lights and things. Whereas if you just have a notepad, a uh, totally clean canvas to work on, uh, and just draw out basic shapes even, so you have an idea for a headlight, say, um, just sketch it out, see um, see what works, see if you like the design, and then try and replicate it in automation using what you have here. Um, it's just a way of helping you get more creative, uh, basically. And the other thing, yeah, look at real life cars. For example, uh, these headlight grill uh, components I've got here, um, they uh, they were sort of inspired from the Lamborghini Drama and the uh, Alfa Romeo Montreal. Uh, both cars that have sort of slightly covered headlights uh, with like sort of a pop up uh, section, which I've tried to do here in a slightly angry way for uh, brand identity reasons I'll get into later. And um, yeah, also this grill, and uh, I quite like the idea of the grill going all the way down, so uh, I did that. And uh, yeah, so looking at real life uh, cows can help. Another thing I did, um, I noticed lots of Japanese uh, cows at the time didn't have uh, reverse lights for a start, uh, or at least I couldn't see any if they are, if they do have one, but in the 60s, didn't see any. And um, also their indicators were usually not orange, so on the front here the indicators are in the inside and are just plain white, although I thought I gave I made the bulb orange. Um, I don't want to click and mess it up now, but yeah. Um, so yeah, looking at that, uh, doing those sort of things can make your car look a lot more real, uh, if that makes sense. I recommend if you're starting out on things like this to pick a time period you're familiar with. Uh, for example, if you're very interested in 60s muscle cars, um, there's lots to go off there and uh, lots of things you can do um, that are quite interesting, lots of inspiration, and things are all the cars of that time look fairly similar, so you can probably afford to uh, borrow, it, borrow a couple of ideas of real cars and no one will really notice. Uh, or if you don't really have a period you're too familiar with, I recommend doing the 80s. The 80s is easy because you just put square headlights on and big black bumpers, but uh, you can do lots of creative things in terms of the way you use plastic trim um, running down the side of the car, for example. That's just an extra bit of detail that uh, is fairly simple to do, but uh, lots of people miss it, um, which can really help separate your car apart from uh, those that forgot to do it, or uh, indeed uh, things like uh, headlight wipers and uh, other things. Yeah, just look at what Cows of the Time did.
Now, if your car is part of a brand, remember that, uh, you know, uh, brand exists in a country in May being a certain time period, or maybe it's just starting out. For example, this car was designed for my company, Kika, uh, when it was first founded. This was the original car. Originally, it was a lot worse mechanically, but basically I decided, since I don't particularly enjoy doing law, to just make it a car I actually like uh, mechanically. But uh, I still wanted to keep the way that it looks a bit cheap and handmade. So, for example, it's got the steel wheels and it's got the uh, um, pins holding down the uh, the boot lid and uh, the bonnet. I guess that's really the bonnet. Uh, as long with these hinges at the top, which I've made using aerials, which are quite a nice uh, feature, I think. But, um, yeah, doing things like that uh, can help. A single mirror as well and a single wiper, just ways of making your car look maybe a bit cheaper uh, if that's what you're looking for or this uh, bracket at the bottom which was done using a bonnet vent um, which I'm quite proud of um, but yeah look at it um, for example if you're doing maybe like a 50s American company or starting or building a 50s American car, America was doing quite well at the time so uh, it probably going to look quite lavish and extravagant uh, not particularly small uh, also remember to reuse fixtures for example uh, I've used the uh, headlights on the back here and uh, yeah uh, try to remember that these fixtures are only really grouped in categories just to make it slightly easy to find um, for example uh, not all vents have to just be vents you could use them for uh, little bits of details, or for example the bumper bars, uh, one of the favourite of mine is to use them as splitters and uh, sort of ducktail spoilers uh, if you're lying to, or cardinal lock on some of the squarer bodies um, and uh, yeah just make them quite thin um, you can make uh, quite cool sort of lips and chin spoilers uh, get, just give you a bit of extra detail, plus unlike the uh, actual lips, spoilers and wings don't uh, add drag so something low power that isn't too... Uh, it doesn't need too much downfalls um, you know I don't really want the drag that comes with it, so having the extra lips and things to create uh, little ducktails and things uh, helps a lot Remember to uh, check over your car too once you've finished with it because it's a, it's a simple mistake to make. Uh, I made it myself uh, if you saw my example car for the uh, Winter Premium Car Challenge. Uh, I forgot to put mirrors on it. So after you think you're done with the car, just check over it and make sure you've done everything. Have you put headlights on, indicators on, They're easy things to forget, number plates, bumpers, mirrors, windscreen wipers, even things like... Um, uh, fuel caps and uh, door handles and uh, just little things like that because you'd be surprised how easy it is to forget them um, yeah make sure that you have it I'd recommend making like a little checklist or something that you can tick off at the end make like a uh, Google Sheet spreadsheet or something to um, put together and just like tick it off at the end um, just have something simple or even just have it in your little sketch pad or something and finally, just a bit of a tip with badging. Uh, I recommend if you just if you need to get badges straight, um, get one of these out. Um, can help if you press F on uh, where the fixture highlighted to focus on it. Little uh, detail. It's put me on the other side. Um, but yeah, uh, just uh, would yeah helps you focus on. But um, yeah, having. Um, Having these uh, bits of trim when you uh, lay down badges can uh, help you uh, align them up. So, for example, now if I just want to write, I don't know, what do I want, want to write? Just write hello. Um, get it, you can size it up or whatever. Uh, just change the size. Uh, for example, I've actually just realized, yeah, they're all capitals here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, and then just shift click to copy by having this. Um, fixture here I can align all the bottoms up together uh, more useful when you have like separate sized ones like uh, for example I will just want the first letter to be a bit bigger 
and I can keep shift clicking. What I also recommend you do, just like shift click the amount of letters you need. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier to uh, lay everything down. That's one too many. Um, no, there's no exclamation mark. I was gonna. Uh, I can spell though. It's fine. Um, but yeah, just having um, having them all there, and then you can just quickly select them and keep them the right size. Just saves a bit of time, in my opinion, because you don't need to constantly scroll back and forth. Uh, you can just have them all out there uh, in the correct size. Um, okay. It might be about to crash now, so um, I should have written goodbye, actually, since it's frozen now. Um, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully these tips have been useful, uh, can help you uh, bring out a bit of design, uh, hopefully make you consider some things that you may have uh, not considered. Um, like, for example, using uh, the mechanical side of your car to influence the uh, the visual side through, I don't know, maybe like uh, aerials and things like that, but also to uh, hopefully let you uh, be a bit more creative. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. And until next video, uh, goodbye.